So in this video, uh, I'm not going to show the entire repair. Um, it's it was pretty routine. You've seen it a million times, <laughs> where I uh, bond the pieces back together and do some fills on the cracks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, and on this episode, I just simply want to address uh, making a missing piece on this uh, object. So. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so um, I'm repairing the base on this Kuan Yin uh, statue, and um, I need to make a missing part for the base. It's still in the works. I'm not going to show the entire repair, just the making of the missing piece. So um, I'm going to... <coughs> I need to fill this. We have. Uh, I put all the pieces together that I have, and what you see missing is what I don't have. And so I need to make a replacement for this. And I'm essentially going to make this empty space right here. Uh, I'm taking a mold to replace that part, and, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So what I'm going to do is go around to the other side, or I've got a a longer section of unbroken pat this pattern that's unbroken and I'll take a mold off of that and so what I'm going to do is um, let's say the piece on the other side is this big I need to make it uh, take a mold off a larger section of that so that I include enough pattern so that I, I can adjust it one way or another to match it up on the other side so, and <clears throat> in order to make that mold, I'm going to use this product right here. It's called Easy Mold. It's a silicone putty. Uh, you mix it up by hand. It's really quick and easy. And what I like about it is it's two things. It's very quick, and it makes a pretty stiff mold when we're done. So that when I put my A plus B putty into that mold, it won't distort the mold with the weight of the putty in it. So the mold is strong enough to hold its shape. That's the idea. So today we're just gonna mix it up, put it on here, and I will... You can use this putty um, within about 20 minutes, but it's better to wait overnight so that it degasses. The gases in the putty, uh, in, in the silicone, uh, can... Uh, evaporate out otherwise uh, it could leave tiny little micro bubbles on the inside of the mold giving me a rough surface on the mold and I'd rather not make more work for myself if I don't have to so uh, I want to mix up some of this and we'll put it on here all right so there's my putty taken out two roughly equal amounts and you just take and uh, mix it together by hand. Push it so there's no bubbles in it. So like that. I'll squeeze it out and you can see nice even color. There's no streaks in it. Okay, so I'm just going to take this section around here. Press my mold onto it. Alright, it's been a little over a half an hour and this is set up now. The way you test it is give it a poke, and if it doesn't leave a dent, you're cured. So we we'll just peel it off. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of paint stuck to the inside, but you can see there's a bit of a pattern to it. Okay, so I'm going to let this degas overnight, and then I'm going to fill this with uh, A plus B tomorrow. So this is what I'm going to be using to fill my mold with, and uh, it's called A plus B. 
uh, epoxy putty. And that's the name of the brand is A plus B brand. And it's the, you see me use this a, a lot to make missing parts and things. It's very hard. Uh, clay-like consistency uh, uh, epoxy putty. So I have equal amounts of my uh, putty mixed together and I'm going to mix it. It's really stiff as you can see. It's almost like clay except it's stickier. And if I do this first I get it. It mixes quicker. As you can see, we're getting thinner and thinner layers. I do this a couple, half a dozen times, and I'll get hundreds of layers. Okay. Okay, we got all the streaks are gone ready to work with it. Whew, it's a workout. So uh, I'm going to put this in my mold. This will take, takes about four hours for it to cure, uh, but I usually let it go overnight. So I just start filling my mold with it. This can get a little tricky because <laughs> it's so sticky. And I'm just going to get it in here and work it around as I go. All right, so as I said earlier, uh, when I was talking about this mold and why I like it, this molding material, why I like it is because it's stiff enough to hold its shape. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure if the weight of the fill in the uh, mold is going to flatten out this curve a little bit. So um, I don't want to arbitrarily just decide and prop it between something to get this shape. That that's doing the opposite. See, as it, right now it's, it, it straightens out a little bit with the weight. So what I'm going to do is just lean it on its side. That way, there's no weight affecting this the curvature of this mold. So we'll just let it sit like that for four hours, and um, it should be fine. Okay, so now it's the next day and we're going to take this out of the mold and it peels out nice and easily. The marks I made on the mold are transferred to the mold and now I'm uh, going to grind this down on my sander. I have to take this down where it's flat and then there's a line that you probably can't see on here that I need to sand it down to. Okay. I'm going to mark it here and you'll see. Okay, so. All right, so I've drawn a line where I need to grind down to on the bottom side. Okay, so here we go.
So we're back at the statue here and I have this uh, piece trimmed and ready to go in here. So I just have to mark it for the length right now. So <clears throat> I'm looking at my pattern on the statue and I'm matching it up to the pattern on my casting. And so if I line up this right on top of the one below it and go to the line between them, make a pencil line, there's one end of it, and here's the, the other end. I want to go right to there. So, it's going to be right on that line. <laughs> Close enough. And this will have to trim the fit in there. As you can see, it's kind of tapered. Actually, I'm going to make it a lot shorter. I'm going to go, no, I'm going to go with what I got because I, I want as much of this pattern as possible. So now I have to just cut this for length and do a little filing and trimming to make it fit. And then once it's in there, there will be a, a tiny gap where the line is where I'm cutting it, but that's okay because I'm, I need that space for the bonding uh, material, which I'm going to use the same epoxy that I built this with is going to also be the adhesive to hold it in place. And there, as you can see behind here, there are going to be voids that need to be filled. And then this space down here, we can address in another video. All right, so I have to remark this. Uh, I'm going to trim this to fit. So <clears throat> I need to get this angle in here to get this to close. So I need to Cut off this piece here, file that down, and on the back side of this, I'm tracing it with my pencil up in here. To get this line, which which is up to here, and then we'll just have to fill this piece in. So now I'm gonna, I got my marks. This is all coming off, and uh, I'm going to file it down. I'll file this and cut that. So. This is not to get an exact fit. It's just going to be a, an approximate fit. saw this part off. So it's very close to fitting. I need to file the back side of it down to fit. There we go. Nice. Doesn't look real pretty at the moment, but it will fit. So, all right. So now that I have my piece trimmed to fit where I need it, I go in here. And I mixed up some uh, A plus B putty, which is uh, the same as what this is made out of. And start to cement it into position.
So I will also be filling all of this space along here and here with more of this uh, with more of this uh, A plus B. All right, so I'm finally going to fill in this gap here uh, today. And so I'm going to back it up with this piece of cardboard, which I've covered with packing tape, and then put a coat of wax on it so that the A plus B doesn't stick to it. Otherwise, I'll glue this cardboard in here, which really doesn't matter because this whole thing's going to be covered when it's finished. This will This will have another piece of cardboard over it with felt on it. That'll be the bottom. So I'm going to tape this into place here. And this is uh, just a, it's not really structurally strong. It's just a backing that I can put my fingers behind and hold in place just to give me and, and it'll keep this from sagging once I have it filled with A plus B but basically I'm going to be filling this in while I hold the back of it That's that. And I've got my A plus B mixed already. All right, so let's fill her up. And this coating is not going to be pretty, just to get it in place. It's really important as I start this. <clears throat> That I get good adhesion at the edges so I'm pressing this down and in place so I get full contact all along this edge and then we'll smooth it out as we go there will be another fill on top of this later. This is just the fill the gap at the moment. All right, so this is nice and cured now, and I'm going to take off the backing. And since I waxed it, it doesn't stick. <clears throat> and so I just need to put a little bit of more um, a plus B on here just to level off some of these cracks. Again, uh, this is going to be covered with a pad 
and uh, with felt so you'll never see this anyway water in my tool All right, so I've leveled this plane right here, and now I'm, I've marked my inner circle around here, and I'm going to trim that, and it's going to make a lot of dust, so I'm outside. All right, so we're getting into the final stages of this, and now I've filled it with A plus B, and I'm going to add the uh, milliput. So I'm going to work my way around, all the way around this. Just continue what I'm doing. I don't see a need to make you watch all. All right, now it's time to file the uh, milliput down on this. Uh Okay, so now I have found, I have filed all my fills down all the way around and um, rebuilt everything. So the next stage is I'm going to put uh, about three heavy coats of cold glaze on this and then uh, we'll paint it white. And then after that, we paint the brown. All right, we're finally getting uh, to put some paint on this Kuan Yin. And uh, I've heavily cold glazed the base from here down uh, and sanded it. I, put, I think I put three heavy coats on. And I sand it to give my paint something to stick to. And uh, that's where we're going next. I want to hit, hit this with uh, my color that I mixed up.
All right, so now we've got uh, several layers of cold glaze on here, and it's been sanded, so I can paint it. And now I put the final wash of this around here. And just slop it on here. Wipe it on, wipe it off. I'm going to wipe it again in a few minutes when it gets a little drier and we'll get some more. Alright, I've given it a couple of minutes to get a little bit dry and then I start to wipe off the highlights. And so I've added a piece of cardboard with felt glued to it, glued onto the bottom. <laughs> 